Ren from Hallowed Vita. And today we're sharing our favorite games for the PSP and PS Vita. Let's check it out. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Hallowed Be That Game, and I am so psyched to be joined once again by Danik. We're here for PlayStation, baby. Oh, man, we are diving straight in. I'm very excited, and as usual, please be sure to share your top three games for the PSP and PS Vita down in the comments. We've been enjoying reading the DS ones. Oh, my sure. gosh, we have found a gold mine, and we actually have a couple that we've picked up and we're going to be checking out. So Might see some videos about them. Yeah, seriously. So, Anyways, be sure to share your deep cut favorites down in the comments because we're always looking for more games. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start off with a joint favorite of ours for the PSP. So if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you might know that we are huge Persona 3 fans. And obviously Persona 3 Portable has to be on here. And I have has to, to be. Oh, it has to be. And I have to give a big thank you to you because you actually were the one like, you have to play this. You have to play this. Oh my gosh. I Honestly, after playing Persona 5 and Persona 4, I was just like oh, so hungry for more. And this is such a tonally different game than I feel like everything else in the series that came after it still reeling from P3. yeah that that ending we won't spoil anything but holy moly that one hits you from orbit the it's, whole game has just stuck with me since i played it yeah. i mean four five three they all do but like you said they just hit different and right. three was dark yeah it was very <laughs> dark and what was so fascinating about it is it has a very unique soundtrack you know and i yeah. know it gets kind of memed on this and that but like look like, you go through all the stages of loving, hating, yeah. and then loving again. The baby, baby. Yeah. I, I won't, I won't get it. Mass destruction is proof yeah. that, uh, what do you call it, Stockholm Syndrome is real. <laughs> it is real. But genuinely, just so iconic. But even on top of that, the dorm theme, just the ambiance of it, and like the midnight hour it's, it's, is... It's oppressive in yeah, a way. Yeah, it's like, just... The eerie. walls always feel like they're closing in on you, and Tartarus. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Tartarus. Maybe because it's a little bit repetitive, yeah. but... I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not. It. I'm not upset that they kind of geared away from the repetitive, like the repetitive nature of Tartarus. Sure. But like that said, I mean, for when this came out, this is genuinely one of the best JRPGs I think ever made. One of my favorites, I, no for doubt. sure. And on the PSP, it is amazing. Now, I have shared in the past. I wish there was like a definitive version of this. But I'm so stoked that this is going to be accessible to new fans. Me too. too. It's it's a shame that you're kind of stuck with this. VN mm -hmm. take on P3 yeah. aside from Tartarus, right. but it's yeah, and such a still a great way to play. And it game. has a ton of replay value because you know I beat it the first time as you know the male protagonist. Now when it comes out on everything else, I'm gonna play it again. I'm gonna play it as the female protag. So I mean, there's definitely like a lot of life that can be drawn from this game. But yeah, overall, Persona 3 Portable, it's go. It's an incredible JRPG and a must play on the PSP. Absolute must play for any any fan of JRPGs. It is a little lengthy, but it's it, it's got some you, heft. You really ought you really ought to play it if you haven't. All right, so the first other uh, the P3P game I'll talk about is uh, God of War: Ghost of Sparta. This is so fascinating to me. I've never played any. The two P there were yeah. two PSP God of Wars. This and I think it was Chains of Olympus. I could be wrong there. Okay, but they're both really, really good, and I think they're really, really good largely because they're short. They're both like four hours long, an afternoon game, it, and just as soon as the game starts, it puts you right into that God of War action. You got a big boss, and you're getting through the tutorial, but right. it's really good, and it hits all of the high notes of God of War in a really compact game. That's per excellent. Perhaps ironically that it's on the PSP, but I thought the world of Ghost of Sparta, it really pushed the PSP's visuals and sound and all of the 
hardware notes of the PSP. It was a, really the swan song of the console, I felt. Yeah, and, and what's fascinating about the PSP is like when I see this game, if I just saw it without context and I haven't played it, I, I wouldn't have guessed it was a PSP game. It it looks really good. It, it's a looker, man. I know they re, re-released it on like PS3. I don't know if they how upscaled or anything, but... If it looked great on there, it looked yeah. great on the PSP. It played great. It, it was simple. It was There was nothing crazy about it. But it gave you just that quick God of War, big action, big right. big scenes. And as somebody who loves JRPGs, I like having short games to kind of buffer you do. in between. Like, yeah. a, it, it is a per- perfect like action palette cleanser. Right. It's not a... You know, if you've played God of War prior to the new God of War series... Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's just it's a simple action game, and again, because it's short, I just feel like it's a really solid palate cleanse. Fantastic. God of War, Ghosts of Sparta. Have you played it? Let us know what you thought of it down in the comments. So for my next game, I'm going to have to kind of dig back to my roots and go to Castlevania: The Dracula X Chronicles. And oh man, it has been a hot minute since I played this it's game. It's been a while. But it left such a distinct impact on me. I think, to me, when I think of the PSP, like, because I played Persona 3 Portable much later. Same I, here. Like, same this here. is, like, what I think of when I think of my time with the PSP. I mean, the graphics are gorgeous. The music absolutely slaps. And some might say slaps too hard. I really loved it because, like, what initially drew me in is I had just recently beaten the Symphony of the Night on, like, I don't know, Xbox Arcade or something. Yeah. Um, And I wanted more. And when I saw that this was coming out and it had Symphony of the Night on on the disc, I was like, well, heck yeah. And so you kind of had to, like, unlock it. I can't honestly remember how you unlock Symphony of the Night, but... I remember it was it was a little it, it was, was different. a process, but I just remember thinking, "Oh, dude, this guy looks so awesome!" But then when I was playing, I was like, well, "Holy moly! Like, what is this? What is this? This is so cool!" And I just had a ton of fun with it. Not an easy game. I, I mean, I Challenge. was a different gamer back then, but like, um, not an easy game. But it was definitely fun, and to me, it is just the most nostalgic memories for the PSP. The weird, uh, this is a weird game because whenever the PSP was out and like uh, when I was in high school, uh, this was a game that for some reason it seemed like everybody had. Uh, it was just like right. uh, people were in a Castlevania mood, I don't know. But right. This game grabbed a lot of attention from my peers at the time, so like you said, right. when I do think about the PSP and playing ad hoc games at high school, for some reason Castlevania is the game people had with them. It was just a classic we all talked about, and I do think it having Symphony of the Night grabbed a lot of our attention for sure was perhaps a good marketing move was such a goat time for gaming all right so my third psp game might be cheating i feel like a little bit here yeah, because it. it's a english translation of a japanese only game oh, okay i know it is. And, okay. it, and it's pretty recent um it is the yakuza black panther 2 game on psp I don't really know. I'm not going to pretend right. I can pronounce the game, <laughs> but it's Black Panther 2. Right. And it is a... Weirdly, I, I talked to you. Uh, I got into the Yakuza franchise last year. Right. And I played through all of those, wanted more. Incidentally... What a glorious run. Yeah. Too. I mean, it, you it just was some crushed It was an endurance run. Yeah. So, as, come to find out, uh, there was two PSP games released in Japan, and right, as, right about the time I finished them all up, a English group released a full translation of Black Panther 2. What timing. It was meant I, to be. Yeah, it was meant to be. I played through it. It was really, really fun. Yeah. And then the weird thing was that I'm a huge fan of the Nintendo 64, uh, WWF, No Mercy. Oh, right. WrestleMania. Well, who is yeah. w, uh, WCW <laughs> Revenge. You know, Rock great, on, great yeah. stuff. Come to find out, this was made by them. Like, oh what my a, gosh. Crazy circumstances. So, they kind of have, if you've ever played the 64 wrestling games, these kind of have a one versus one gra- grapple and attack yeah. type of combat that those wrestling games had. And then you have the big, you know, Yakuza dramatic story and, right. s- and absurdity to all of that. It was, it's fantastic. I, it looks excellent. It looks, too. I don't know, like, I can't con- put in the context of the PSP mm-hmm. this game, but it, it it's, it's a looker. It's packed with content. Yeah, it, it's a really, really, really good PSP game. It's just one of those examples of like 
I, once again, why didn't this get an official use? I want, I just, I know, like, we've talked about even on this channel, yeah. like, we, it seems to us Yakuza's popularity has yeah. blown cer certainly through. blown yeah. up. Yeah. So I don't know, I don't even know what year this game came out right. in, like, what, what was, what, was it between Yakuza Three? I'm not sure. Maybe it was the Lost Souls. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I know there were there was some weird time where they were like not even going to bring Yakuza here because it was doing so poorly. Right. And I guess the PSP two were. Victims well, I'm to playing that. Xenoblade Three right now, which is arguably Nint one of Nintendo's most popular franchises. They didn't even want to bring that list. That whole like That's Xenoblade. That's true. They, that was a whole so, campaign. It's just like have faith in the American audience to to enjoy your game. Because, like, seriously, this Yakuza game, it's legit. I mean, it looks fantastic and totally, I think, would have an audience, at least these days, maybe with an enhanced port or something. Sorry, maybe, I digress. Maybe it's something that we could revisit and get something official. I don't know. But for those of you who don't know, there is a full, it, there's a half English translation of the first and a full English translation of the second. Rock on. Now for my last game on this list, I have saved best for last for me. This is my favorite PSP game, easily. And uh, yeah, spoiler alert, it's Final Fantasy VII related. Crisis Zach! Work. Zach, dude, he's from Gungaga. Um, I will say this, this game... How honest, excited for you are, that, are you for that remake? Dude, I'm so ready. Because <laughs> you know they're going to add a little snippet, like ooh, little extra are cut they, scene. Are they going to change the ending? Uh, I think that I think they I think they're going to. I think they are a little <laughs> bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. Now, like I, obviously, I've not been shy about the fact that Seven Remake has just blown me away, and I've always kind of been at least receptive to like doing different things with the Seven series. Yeah. And Crisis Core was a bold step. I mean, you're going to make a game without Cloud, without Tifa, what are you thinking? You know, but they it, did it. It's hard for us to conceptualize that there are people who weren't there right. when this game came yeah. out. This was controversial. Like, uh, well, yeah, like, it was just like, It wasn't what a are JRPG you doing here? and, like, attack yeah. fight item. Well, because you got to think, the only other, like, games that kind of had branched out, you have Dirge of Cerberus, which I don't know if you know this, wasn't that not well, well not, not well that received. well received but crisis core it plays different it's it's like a pseudo action rpg it's excellent and it tells a heartfelt bold story very bold and it embellishes on a story we know because typically prequels there's zero stress you know what's going to happen the end. but and without spoiling anything this game leans into that and it just crushes it. It sticks to landing. It knows your expectations. Yeah. And honestly, this game made me ball. Like, it just shoot. It just absolutely just devastated me. I loved it. I cannot wait for the remaster and port because so many gamers need to play this because it's just fun. And I know they're kind of cleaning up and adding a little bit of quality of life for it so i'm excited to just re-experience it again because at the end of the day a great story is a great story and lovable characters are still lovable can't wait i finished up final fantasy 7 remake earlier this year yeah on your recommendation oh yeah followed it up with crisis core God, phenomenal what a glory i loved it it was a, yeah. gr it was a great game just i I, st I feel the action still holds up i re the remake that made I, me so happy yeah i had so much fun with it the the I forget what they called the slot machine reels. It was really enjoyable. Yeah. I still don't understand right. yeah. what exactly was going on. Yeah. But it, it, you know, it it, right. it it hit the receptors. The combat was action, fun, right. fast. I really enjoyed it. I feel like this game did a lot for the series as a whole, and for Final Fantasy VII itself. I mean, it just mm -hmm. gave a whole new scope to the world. And I think it's absolutely a must. -play. Okay, now switching gears here, we're going to advance in time to the PS Vita. And we're not really going to change oh, our number one game that's true. a whole heck of a lot. Well, I will say this. Yeah, we both have our the same number one game. But the PS Vita, I think, is a JRPG juggernaut. It is the mecca that all JRPG fans should track. I, it's just god-tier good. 
You know what I played a lot on the PS Vita? What's that? Fighting games. Isn't really? that weird? Oh, man, I played a cool. lot of Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Really? Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Right. Mortal Kombat was on it. Guess what I played a lot of? JRPG. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, I, I well, am a you, unique person, I no, swear. I, 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 you had gotten uh, the PS Vita pretty late in its life, yeah, did you not? for sure. I got it about a year before everything went bananas. So I had a what year. Was, what was the first game that really pulled you in? Golden. Game? Golden oh, was, was okay. yeah. And For some reason, I didn't think yeah, it was. Persona 4 Golden is our both number one. How and, could it not be? And how literally? How could it not? I mean, it is genuinely an argument, a very strong argument for the best JRPG ever made. Okay, is it my favorite? I Make, that's, depend, that's depends that's when a, you ask me. Yeah, it's the, that's a whole argument for another day. However, Golden just hit everything right. You have a very serious and at times spooky story. It was very fascinating. There's a serial killer yeah. out there, and and it's killing people in it creepy ways like i mean you know people are freaking hanging, hanging from, from antennas yeah it's it's spooky but anime scooby-doo yes it's anime scooby-doo and swear to god <laughs> i needed that Damn. i didn't know i needed it but i needed it and you know what else i needed the sweet chin music from chie dude boom oh, right on the chin. oh right roundhouse kick dude friggin rocks chie best girl don't at me don't uh, at us don't at us um but seriously like the combat's there and like this to me is an, a timeless game, kind of like I totally agree. Total like uh, Chrono Trigger, I would say it exists separate from time. You could play it at any decade, and you will be having a blast. That is what Persona 4 Golden has achieved. It's just fun to play. The characters are beyond lovable. That music, that, that music, mm, God, it slaps. Hanging out in Inaba, it's a great <sighs> setting for the game. It is it's like the rural town. But I will say this, like, your affection is top goat, like, like home the, theme, town themes. Like, that's up there. Listen, Final Fantasy, victory theme, yeah, man, period. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know who I give it to. Yeah, uh, that's tough. Bam, bam. Dude, yeah, that, good. That is, like, pew, pew. <laughs> Sometimes I just sit there on the, the I would victory sit, screen. I would sit on the victory screen, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah 100%. But, you know, all in all, it's excellent. I, I mean, the only thing I can knock against this game is that Marie is annoying. And her, yeah, I, and her golden specific dungeon is nightmare fuel. I hated it. But outside of that, this game does very little to nothing wrong. I mean, it's... I would... It, this is as close to a perfect game as you can get, I think. It's just that good. I have to assume anyone who's ever like dealt with a Vita, Vita at least played or tried yeah, I, P4G. And if you haven't, nowadays it's on PC. It's coming yeah. out soon for everything. Yeah, I mean, this coming to Switch. Obviously, my channel is very Nintendo-heavy, JRPG-focused. But legit, this coming to everything, like, Golden deserves its time in the gotta, sun again. you got to yeah. play Golden. Yeah, 100%. Persona 4 Golden, are we just crazy for being so cuckoo bananas over it? Who is the best waifu? Let us know down in the comments. And who's the killer? Ooh. So I know you and I have had many conversations outside of this channel yeah. about digital and physical and emulation and, <laughs> and things like that. We may have discussed it. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, yeah. you know, I'm very right. open to playing games on the platform that they weren't necessarily made for right. and things mm -hmm. like that. And I, uh, Tear Away on the oh. PlayStation Vita is a game you have to play on a PlayStation Vita. It right. will not work right. in outside of that context. And Tear Away is really one of the most interesting games I've ever played. Have you ever played no, it? No. Tear Away, so if you have a PS Vita in your hand, you have the front facing touchscreen, the rear facing touchscreen. I believe there was a rear-facing camera, a front-facing camera, and just the, uh, the features right. of the Vita. Very Vita. Yeah, yeah. and the, this game <clears throat> plays with you as almost the god of this world, and your face is pulled from the front-facing camera, and you are placed as the sun and life of this world in various scenes. That's excellent. It's a very, it's just, it's such a unique game. Right. It's really, like, you can... I can have some video of the game playing here, yeah. but 
the way the game communicates to you, the right. player, and has you involved in its right. world. It's so That's unique. It's a really, and again, it, you have to play it on the Vita to really appreciate the things it tries to do. It's not necessarily functionally like the best game I've ever played. Right. It's, it's a really unique experience yeah. that I think if you have a PlayStation Vita, I, I don't think this game has hit that crazy right. value right. or expense right. yet. Because right. I, don't, I don't think it was terribly popular. Right. Another one of the Sony games that just bombed and right. I think made them uninterested in the Vita so quickly. Right. Right. It, it's a it's unique... Sad. It is. It really is. And Tearaway is another one that... I think if you have the opportunity, check Tearaway out. Yeah, I mean, and that kind of even touches on a whole nother discussion is we've been very focused on preserving an emulation of games, but for games like Tearaway... Or, it won't work. Yeah, so it's like, what do we do about preserving the form factor experience of the Vita itself? Yeah. Because that's heavily relying like on if the when the, all the Vitas of the world fail, right. Tearaway just cannot be... Right. Spirit, like, you know, we've talked about the DS clamshell games yeah. that use that gimmick. 100%, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Tearaway, have you played it? Would you recommend it? Let us know in the comments. Now, for my next game on today's list, I want to switch it up a little bit myself and put in a visual novel. I can't talk about the Vita without talking about my favorite VN of all time, and it is Muvlove. You have Muvlove Extra, Unlimited, and Alternative. So essentially on the Vita, I am kind of cheating here and putting the entire experience, but if I'm hard pressed, I obviously have to pick alternative. These games, I can't really discuss without ruining what makes them so good, but I have a giant review on this down in the channel. This game definitely stole me away. I'm not what I would call a visual novel aficionado. Like I have to be in a very specific mood to sit down with a VN, but some have done it here. Most recently, the Fault series, but with Muv Love, this game is so bold and unique in its direction. It uses a lot of storytelling tropes and ideas, but it's fully self-aware and it explores them to masterful conditions. Um, these are not short VNs. If you're wanting to sit down and, and hop into these, be ready for like a novel epic experience. The characters and everything there are some extremely intense, disturbing moments in this. There are mind-blowingly amazing events. I can't really share much more without spoiling it, but I can say this. Muv Love fans are cuckoo bananas for this series for a reason. And if this series clicks with you, it is going to click with you in a way that no other VN has really been able to for me. And I love these, these series, and Alternative is by far and away my favorite. Uh, I mean, you, you're a little bit into the VN. I have right? played very, very few. And yeah. I was going to say, like, as someone who's a, totally unfamiliar yeah. with the Muv Love series, yeah. where do I start? Is this you start would, point? Yeah, it's one of those games to where don't listen to somebody if they say, well, you can start with the last one, this and that. No, I mean, these series are like, they expect you to sit down, buckle up, and you're going to be along for the ride. So you'd want to start with Muv Love Extra. Um, it's essentially, if you got it, like, physically on the Vita, but I think they're all on Steam as well. I mean, you can get every one of them on Steam. But you would want to start with Extra, and then it leads directly into Unlimited, and then Unlimited. And, and you could probably beat those in, like, I would say, I don't know, it's been a while, like 12 hours. Unlim uh, alternative is where the beef of it's at, and that could take you about maybe 50 hours. Oh, wow, really? I, yeah, it's... Muv Love, I can't recommend it enough. And if there's any Muv Love fans out there, please let me know down in the comments. All right, my last PS Vita game might be another weird one, but uh, it was one of those games I played the PS Vita as the portable was meant to be. Kind of weird. Really? And just that real short, yeah. you know, form game. Yeah. And it's, uh, I, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, uh, TXK. Oh, good for you. Yeah, yeah. right <laughs> on. TXK was, I think, one of those games they included in the uh, PlayStation Plus right. monthly games right. they gave you. And uh, it was just a game that kind of hit me at the right time. And did you ever play Tempest on the Atari? Yeah. This yeah. is just like a drug-induced version of that where everything's <laughs> brighter, <laughs> oh, faster. Oh, okay. <laughs> there was, like, in this weird era of gaming, it seemed like take old Atari games, like action arcade right. games, and, like, put them through an LSD trip. Right, like we Polybius, had, man. Yeah, we had, yeah, we had <laughs> Space Invaders Extreme. Right. There was, uh, 
just to make these old arcades where you just real lights, real fast, real real bright, <laughs> noise. <laughs> and TXK was the uh, Tempest version of that, Rock on, where okay. it was just and I. I you know if I had ten minutes I'd sit down play it get right. through a round die and turn it off and get back to what That's I was what doing. That's what gaming's about. Man. Yeah, it was yeah. just it was almost the cell phone game before I had a cell phone game. Rock on, man! That's fantastic. It's it's I don't know I can't really speak too mu too right. much. It's either it's a game for you or it right. ain't. The music was fun. The action's fun. Hundred percent. Okay, so for my last game, obviously I can't tread too far from the JRPG scene, but I got to give it to Ease Memories of Cell Seven. Now, I know Ease 8 is also on the Vita, but I, I played it first elsewhere. Anyways, Memories of Salsetta, to me, is one of the most underrated Ease games. Um, it definitely plays a lot like your high-octane Ease 8, 9 action, um, but to me, this is the perfect length JRPG. It's about 28 hours to get, like, the... I can't remember if it was a true ending or not, but it took me about 28 hours to beat absolutely lovely cast of characters the lush island that you explore in it is just gorgeous i love the quick time dodging and everything it's just so fun and to me when i think of vita graphics and like i don't know what it is but like i can be like lured into this nostalgic wonderland of like the graphics that are on the Vita, PSP, and like the 3DS, DS, like that, yeah, that era. Something about that. Oh, style. dude, it's like this warm blanket just enveloping me in this just a nostalgic fuel drug trip. But like the graphics of Ease and Memories of Self Set is just one aspect of it. It's got it's got that slap. style. Yeah, it's got that excellent Falcom soundtrack. The combat is smooth and fluid, and just running around and exploring in this, I, it's one of those games that makes the hours melt away. Like, by the time I beat it, I was like, oh man, okay, well, all right. But it was it was just- No time to get sick of it. Yeah, it was an incredible experience, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. I think if you are a fan of Ease 8, if you're a fan of Ease 9, which I am, I love this game so much, you gotta play Memories of Cell 7. And um, I, I cannot recommend it. Thank you all so much for joining us here today. Danik, thanks for coming on again. And Thanks for having dude, me Dude, any excuse we have to nerd out about games with you all, we're going to take it. We're going to take it. Yeah. But thank you all so much for joining. I cannot wait to see the PSP and Vita recommendations out in the comments. I mean, we've gotten loaded up from the DS and 3DS videos, so stoked to be diving into these. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe and hit that notification bell for more PSP and PS Vita videos. And until then, we'll see you all next time.